So we are going to look at another stability method, and that is what we usually call Nicole's chart. And just like other stability methods, the Nicole's chart can be used to obtain several uh, parameters. Like we can talk of, the first one can be gain and face margin. We can also talk of gain and face crossover frequencies. Or we can also talk of uh, what we refer to as uh, the maximum gain maximum peak gain, what we shall refer to as the MP. Then we can also obtain what we refer to as uh, uh, oscillation frequency. Then again we can refer, we can get what we refer to as the bandwidth. Of a system. Of course, we can still get uh, what we can talk about as the damping factor. So, all these are some of the things that we can get. So, you will find that uh, if you look at the Nicole chart, the Nils Cole's chart, just like uh, the board, uh, the, the plots are done in terms of. Uh, decibels and Nicole's chart has got a feature whereby it has got you can it can be used to determine both the open loop and the closed loop uh, system so you'll find that it has got two scales there is the scale where we have the contours the contours for the angles we have the contours for the angles we have the contours for the angles that is what we shall refer to as the n circles and also the contours for the magnitude. And that is what we refer to as the M circles. So if you look at that, it has got two scales, just as I've mentioned. There is the vertical and the horizontal. And then there is uh, what we refer to as the contours. So if you look at the contours, you'll see that each and every contour has got an angle, uh, especially uh, the contours for the angles they have uh, a specific direction, and then the contours for the magnitude also, they are always in terms of circles, and that is why we should refer to them as M circles. So, M circles uh, are always very, very important in determining uh, the system stability, and that is what we are going to use in order to do that. So, very, very fast, we are going to look at how are we going to determine uh, the stability of a system using the Nicole's chart? First thing, consider this one as your graph. So we can consider this as our graph. Then on that graph, you get zero there. You get zero, I believe you can see. Then of course up, down there, this is negative. Gain up there is negative log magnitude, then up there is positive log magnitude. So, if you have that, then you'll find that then for the angle, there is 180 at this point. So, we have 180 degrees. We have 180 degrees. Then, you'll find that zero is here and 360 degrees is at that point. So, Basically, that is now what we refer to as uh, the Nicole's chart. So what I was talking about, you will find that there are some circles here that are labeled. There are some circles here that are labeled. Like if you look at the graph, you'll see 12 dB, 8 dB as they move from, they reduce going up. Then from there, you can see that they are just indicated. So these are what we refer to as the M circles that we were talking about. So those are the ones we refer to as the M circles, whereby maybe there you have 12 dB, here you have 8 dB, here you have 
uh, five, six, five, and so on. So that is what uh, you have for that. Then there are also the ones for the angles. If you look at it, there are also the ones for the angles. And the ones for the angles, you can see, there is for the angle one there, another one there, another one there, in that manner. So they are all over, the ones for the angles. And you'll find that the angles are placed on them, maybe one degrees, the one for the angle, you have one degrees. Then you have uh, several angles, you have one, you have two, you have three, four, five, six, up to 10. Then it jumps up to 20 maybe. So those ones are now what we refer to as the end circles. So that is an overview. So we, was, we are talking about two scales. There is the scale here. There is the scale that is the vertical and horizontal, whereby the angles are on the vertical and the, 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 the angles are on the horizontal line. Then the gains are on the vertical line. So that one is always used, especially for an open loop system. That is for an open loop system. Then again, we have another one whereby we have the scales that consist of both M and N circles. So the M and N circles are basically uh, the contours that are used. And that one is always used but in order, when you talk about the closed loop, of the closed loop of that particular system. You can always use that in order to get the closed loop system. So if you look at uh, that, then I think now we are all familiar with the, uh, how the Nicole's chart looks like. And as we can see, there we are maybe minus four, there we are four, here minus, here eight, here 12, 16, and so on. Huh? Of course, if you look at the scale, you'll find that uh, they are with the four. So I want us to see how to determine, by use of an example, I want us to look at how are we going to determine the various uh, parameters that we have talked about. How are we going to determine the various parameters that we have talked about? So before we can look at an example, maybe you can note what uh, we are going to do in order to get this. The first one, number one, what, how do we get what is referred to as uh, the gain margin? How do we get the gain margin? So let's consider a system uh, whereby maybe we have drawn our lockers or the curve uh, on this. So considering that uh, we have drawn our lockers, maybe that is now what we have, and then Let's say that uh, our system from the curve, we have something like that. So that is what uh, we can talk about. Say, let's talk about that one. And maybe at this particular point, there are various frequencies. Huh? So you can talk of frequencies like uh, at that particular point, you can talk of various frequencies. You can talk of uh, various frequencies at those levels. Uh, those levels, we can have frequencies. And when you will be plotting, it is very, very important that as you plot, you write the corresponding frequencies at this point because that one is what will be very, very important in determining uh, the frequency parameters in this. Uh. So you must ensure that you write the frequencies uh, along the line, just like what we did with the Nyquist. Uh. Just like what we did with the Nyquist, you must be writing the frequencies along. And again, another thing that you also note, notice here is that just like the Nyquist, the, the main difference uh, between how to plot the Nyquist and, uh, the, board, and, and, and uh, the Nichols is one of them is the graph, and another one is that the gain is in decibel, as opposed to uh, in the Nyquist where the gain was in ratios. So everything now will remain the same. So if you look at that, how do we get the gain margin? So if, it, if, if just to remind ourselves how to get the gain margin, then the gain margin should be obtained by reading off the locus at 180 degrees. Where? It's 100, 180 degrees. It intercepts 180 degrees, so where does it intercept 180 degrees? Maybe at this point. 
So that is where you are going to obtain your gain margin. So you come to this point, read it. Then of course, to get the gain margin, it will be zero minus, if it is negative down here, it will be another minus x. And that one will give you the gain margin. So that is how you are going to get the gain margin. Get uh, the gain margin. So you will draw the locus using the data provided or the data you, you, you will obtain. You can still get, give, be given the frequencies and get from your calculations, uh, you get all those particular values for the gains. Uh. So that particular uh, uh, example where we used, uh, we calculated that by using the polar method and the movers theorem can still apply in this case. So you can get that. Then you see, you, you can, from the stability methods, you still see where there is 180 degrees. We said that there are two points that are very, very important, 180 and 0 if it is in decibel, or 180 and 1 if it is in gain ratios. So because this one is in decibel, we are going to get the two points that are very, very important. That is 180 and 0. So that one leads us to the next point where we are going to get the face margin. So the face margin, how are you going to get it? Read it off. You are supposed to read it off where the locus touches 0 dB. Then go to the horizontal, read the angle. 180 minus that angle will give you the face margin. 180 minus that angle will give you the face margin. So basically what we are saying is that the face margin, we are going to get it by reading off at that particular point, read off that particular angle where the locus touches zero dB line, that is at that point, then extend that, then the angle that you are going to get here, we are going to subtract it from 180 degrees, let's say it is x degrees, huh? let's say it is theta degrees, then whatever we are going to get from there will definitely give us what we refer to as the gain, the, the face margin it will give us what we refer to as the face margin. The other parameters that we can always look at are the gain crossover frequency and the face crossover frequency. So we can talk about the gain crossover frequency. Gain crossover frequency. So remember, nothing changes. Where you get the gain margin, you get the face crossover frequency. And where you get the face margin, you get the gain crossover frequency. So where do we get the gain crossover frequency? The gain crossover frequency, we are going to get it where we got the face margin. And this one, you are going to interpolate from the frequencies that you are going to, you are writing in between. Like, for example, let's see, for example, if this frequency was four rads per second, if this frequency was 4 rads per second, and this is 5, and this one appears to be in the middle, then obviously it will be 4.5 rads per second. Is that clear? If maybe it was here, closer to 5, closer to 4, then you can say that it is 4.2 rad per second. If it was here, you can say it is 4.8 rad per second. So you simply do what we refer to as interpolation by the frequencies that you are writing along the locus as you are plotting. So it is very, very key that you always write these particular frequencies as you plot. So that is how you get the gain crossover frequency. And now the fourth one is the phase crossover frequency. Face crossover, again this one, you interpolate. Again that one you interpolate, but now you come to this point. Maybe, like in our case, it is, we can say that it is five if it is here, and that one was five. Huh? But if maybe there are some that, are, if it appears between some, then we can always use uh, an interpolation method in order to determine the exact frequency 
that will be needed. The next one that we can talk about is what we refer to as the maximum gain or MP. Maximum, we can talk of maximum peak gain or what we refer to as the MP. The maximum peak gain or what we refer to as the MP. So, how do we determine the MP? The MP will be determined by the M circles. Are we together? It will be determined by the M circles. So you go to the M circles and the MP can always be determined by looking at the M circle that that particular locus that you plotted is tangential to. It forms a tangent. Huh? When we say that it forms a tangent, then what we mean is that, let's say that that is your M circle. Then, let's say that that is your M circle. Then, the, that particular M circle that this one cuts once. Is that okay? If it appears not to be cutting M circle, any M circle once, then you will also have to approximate the M circles. Like in our case here, it is 12. Yeah? It is cutting inside 12. Which means, if you look at it, then there are several M circles in between here. Right? Then that particular M circle that it is tangent, that is tangential to, it is almost half. Oh? So we can simply say that MP, the value of my MP is going to be 6 dB. So that is how you obtain the MP. Look at that, that is tan tangential to. If not, approximate. Like I can have this, let's say I have several, let's say I have several, like that, and this is what I have. Then maybe this is 12, this is 8, this is 7. Then I want to look at what is it that is tangential to it. So I look at that, approximately it is this one, and therefore my MP will be 8 dB. Are we okay? So you are going to approximate that in that particular manner. Then the next parameter that we also need to see how to get is what we call the oscillation frequency. The oscillation frequency. It is a frequency aspect. Again, we know that all the frequency parameters are supposed to be approximated. So, and where do we obtain it? At that particular point where you approximate your MP. Yeah? Let's say it is touching it at this point. Is that okay? Along that locus, approximate that frequency. If we come to our, our drawing here, so how are we going to get the oscillation frequency? So, the oscillation frequency will be here. It will be here. Now, considering that this is now what is tan it is tangential to, it will be here. So, it's going to be between 4 and 5, but now it is slightly more than 4.5. Right? So, we can say that it is 4.6 rad per second. So, you are supposed to approximate that and obtain that particular value in that manner. So, what I want you to note is that all the parameters for the frequencies are always approximated in the constant. They don't come directly. Is that okay? They don't come directly. So, the other thing that uh, maybe we can talk about is the bandwidth. The bandwidth. Huh? I think the bandwidth can be very, very important here. So, the bandwidth, we can obtain the bandwidth by looking at. So, are we all able to see where the negative 3 dB line is? So, look at the M circle for negative 3 dB on that particular plot. Now, it's supposed to be somewhere here. Maybe we can talk of that. Then, negative 3, don't confuse negative 3 and 3. So, look for where negative 3 dB is on that line, on the Nicole's chart. Look for the M circle for negative 3 dB. M circle for negative 3 dB. 
m circle for negative 3 dv. Negative 3 dv, so we look at it. Negative 3, not 3. Negative 3 must be. Just the way I've drawn, look at Villain image aura. It's just that way. Almost there. Put it straight. Straight. Look at where negative 3 dB is around here. Yes. So, are you seeing it? Yes. So, assume this is my negative 3 dB. Yeah? For you to get uh, the bandwidth, that point where it cuts here. Bandwidth is a, a, a frequency parameter. So that point where it cuts that, so that is where you approximate the frequency. You interpolate the same way we did for the gain crossover and the phase crossover. Is that okay? So you come to this point, read the frequencies that are uh, up and the frequency that is, that is down use that in order to approximate this particular frequency and get that particular value, approximate that particular frequency, and that one will enable you to obtain what we call the bandwidth. And maybe if uh, maybe somebody asks you to obtain uh, what we refer to as uh, the... If somebody asks you to obtain what we refer to as now the... There is what we talked about that we are supposed to obtain. That is the damping factor. If somebody wants you to obtain the damping factor, then this formula will always help you to get the damping factor, whereby we are going to get the value of MP that we had, we can change it to ratio. Is that clear? We change it to ratio. So because initially it was 20 log to base 10 of X is equals to what you have. So you can obtain X. Then after obtaining X, then you equate the M max. M max is given as one all over, one all over, two zeta, two zeta, divide root of one minus zeta squared, where zeta is the damping factor. So if you have the value of M max, you can solve for zeta, make it, the sub, make it a subject, and get the value of zeta. And with that, you shall have obtained what we refer to as the, you shall have obtained what is referred to as the damping factor. We're using that formula. So those are the parameters that uh, we can use in order to obtain uh, the, para the, those are the parameters that can be, you can be obtained from uh, the Nicole's chart. So I want us to very, very fast look at an example and then we can see how we can talk about this. We can now do it by drawing that by on uh, maybe on the Nicole's chart. So in this case, you can go ahead and use the use of transfer function, but uh, in this case, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a table so that uh, we are going to use the table. So we can talk of uh, that one, of course, if you want to use the use of transfer function, you must change all the S's into J omega. Then from there, you come up with the table. In most cases, you will be given the frequencies in which uh, you are going to use in order to plot that particular graph, but if not given, then you can always try the frequencies that gives you an angle between 100 to around 200 or 220, because we know that 
108 is very important. That is where's one of the stability parameters uh, can be found. So we just exceed 180 slightly in order to get that. But in this case, we are going to have a, a table. So the table is here. So we can use this table in order to plot. But if you are not given a table, I believe that uh, you know what to do. So you are going to look at uh, the parameter. You are, you are going to look to, to get to this. Then, of course, you get the terms, all the terms. And again, knowing that it is Nicole's chart, all the gains will be in decibels. Huh? So after getting the gain ratios, uh, you change them again in decibels in order to get that. Huh? So we have GH in dB. And we also have face angle. We have the face angle, so here we have one. 12.6 and minus 127. Here we have 2, 3.92 minus 152. 3 minus 2.22 minus 168. 4 minus 7 minus 179. 5 minus 11 minus 188 and finally 6 minus 14.6 minus 199 so that is the table that uh, we are going to plot so basically that's the table that we're supposed to plot so you come to your let's say this is your chart Seeming that that is now your Nicole's chart. Seeming that is your Nicole's chart. So if that is your Nicole's chart, you have zero. Then you have 180 here. Then of course here you have 360. So in that case, there you have 360. And of course here you have zero. Zero for the angle. 360 for the angle. So. You look at where you have 12.6, of course, it will be an approximation. So here we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, minus 4, minus 8, minus uh, 12, and so on. So you want to get 12.6. Come to where you approximate where 12.6 is, of course, in between here is now uh, 14. It means that if that is 14, then middle in this case will be 13. Middle in this case will be 15. So between 12, 13, therefore you can come with 12.6. Huh? Maybe uh, for, for you can now get that. Use that. Maybe you can draw a line with a faint pencil. So that, that is where to your 12.6 is. Then you come to the angle, you look for where 127 is. So you look for where 127 is. You look for 127. So let's say uh, 127 is around here. I'm just assuming 127 is around here. Then it means that the point that you are looking at is this point. Then what you do, you write the corresponding frequency which is one rand per second. And that is the first point. You go to the second point. 3.92 is approximately 4. So you can come to this. Then where it is, that way, in that manner. Then we look for the angle, 152. Maybe our 152 is here. So 127. Maybe our 152 is here. It is there. And here, it means that the point that we are looking for is here, and it is two rods. You can write two rods a second, and to do that for all of them, 3, 168, 3, 168, let's say 168 is here, and uh, minus 2.2, minus 2.22, so maybe minus 2.22 is here. 68 minus 2.22, so 
So, die ist her. Then it comes to that. There is what we have. Then you write three rads per second. And you do that for all of them. Minus 7, 179. Maybe minus 7 is here. 179 is just next to 180 here. Maybe approximately there. Then minus 7 is here. You come to that. You write 4 rads per second. Then 5 minus 11 minus 188. So that one will be it's that side. Maybe there. 5 minus 11. You come to minus 11. Maybe there. Then that is now what you have. And then you write the corresponding frequency. 5. Then you can talk of 6 minus 14.6 minus 199. So, 199, you can talk of 199 to be around there. You can say 199 is here. Then, be that. 199 is there. Then you can talk of 14.6 uh, minus. So, maybe this is minus 16. So, maybe 14.6 minus is there. And that is now what you have. And then you join. Free hand. And you have your locus. You join freehand and you have your locus. So that is how you come up with that. Said because we know already what is supposed to be done here. We'll just use a table. But if this one is not there and you are given this, you are well and good. If this one is not there and you are given this, then you go to the use of transfer function. You calculate for each term and obtain the angles. And because it is in decibels, you'll have to change it to dB by 20 log to base 10. The same table that we did before. Yeah. So, just to remind ourselves, we say that uh, maybe at this point, where is zero? So zero line is here, and 180 is here. So at this point, we can have several circles. So this is how we said we obtain the, that frequency. This particular M circle, sir, this particular M circles will have values. Are we together? The, all these M circles will be having values, sir. Then you look at that one that is tangential to that. Then you get your MP. Yeah? At that point where it is tangential, you approximate that frequency to get resonant stroke oscillation frequency. So that is why we are supposed to do that. Simple. 7 dB. Yes. Face margin, what did I get? I did not even indicate. Was it around 17 degrees? Not far. Uh, what did you get to be your MP, peak value? MP? No. MP. The decibel that you read here is what we call MP. So around 10, it is tangential to which M circle? It is between 12 and 8. So you can approximate others. So if it is that way, you can approximate 12, between 12 and 8. That is why we say it is 10 dB. Hmm? You can just even using a pencil try to approximate. Then from there, that one will So it's what is going to give you the frequency. Not through. 
resonant two point around two point eight. So what? We need to get to be the bandwidth. Yeah? And it is over. Yeah, so that is those are the values. I'm waiting for your values. Then we can do an, another can look for another example so that you can practice. So there it is. You obtain that. So the first thing, you are going to arrange this one in terms. You've been told that it is between one. So there is no table. So you are going to generate your table. Of course, you are going to have the frequency. Then each and every term, which term is there, J omega term. Then you go to one plus 0 0.5. J omega. Then you go to one plus 0 0.1. J omega. Then of course, from there you will now get your G. You are going to get your G. And your theta. Then from there you are going to get your gain in dB. That is now what you are going to do. So, you've been told that you can talk of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? Then from there, what will this one be? 190, 290, 390, 490, 590. So you look at that. So in that case, it is, you get, it will be a coordinate of 0, comma, omega. And if the value of omega is that, from your calculator, you get that all these angles will be 90. So you get that, get to that. At any point, you'll be replacing the value of omega. So this one will be, you replace the value of omega there by one. So you get uh, the polar, uh, the polar, and there, the, the, the magnitude and the angle for that, one, 0 0.5. There you are going to multiply it by two. One, one for this. Here, one, 1.5, and so on. We fill in the angles. Then you get all those, and all, then you love to change it in decibel. So we can do that. Then you obtain all these parameters. So in case you are not given a table, then you, in, in case you are not given the, the table, then you just have to go through that eh, and obtain this. Eh? Uh, in this case, unlike uh, in board plot, there is no shortcut where you are going to use the straight line approximation. This one, there is nothing like straight line approximation. You just have to form the table and do your calculations. And then from there, you get what, you, you come up with the table that you are going to plot. And then after plotting that particular table, you will be able to obtain the values uh, for that. So I want to see as uh, doing something. So that is what you are supposed to do. So what is here? Maybe to for a start. What do you have here? Yeah? 1.18. The angle? 1.18. Yeah, and what is the angle? 1.18. One one eight. So we can talk of we can put it in two decimal places. Huh? Then the angle is twenty six point six. Huh? We can talk of twenty seven to the nearest one decimal. Huh? Then you do that for all of them. Then what is here? One comma because this is one one comma zero point one. You change that is into polar. One. Five point seven. That we can talk of six. 
and from there using the mover's theorem, come back to this. It will now be, if you come back to that, it will now be 5 divided by 190 times 1.1227 times 1 that 6. You take the angles, so it will be, the angles will be 0 minus 90 minus 27 minus 6, which is going to be the 1 minus 1. One uh, twenty-three degrees, sir. Huh? So the angles will be minus one, two, three. Then the gain, the gain will be five divided by one times that times that, which is basically going to be five divided by one point one two, which is four point six four. Four point four six. Four point four six. So we can talk of 4.46, then you can change this one into decibel. So that you, because when you are plotting this, it's always in decibel. So you are going to change 20 log to base 10 of 4.46. So what is that in decibel? Is it 3.3? 3? Twelve. So you have twelve there. You have twelve there. Then you do that for all this. And for that you will be plotting what you have in decibel versus the angle. Everything what you have in decibel here plus versus the angles. Huh? Of course the frequencies are here that you will be writing at every point and with that you will be able to obtain a transfer function. Is it okay? Yes. <laughs>